Hello everyone. I hope everyone is doing good and all is well. Today, we will be chatting about the Opelousas Massacre, which occurred on September the 28th, 1868 in St. Landry Parish, Louisiana. This unfortunate event claimed the lives of over 200 black people and six to 30 white people. So with that being said, let's chat. In April of 1868, Louisiana's Reconstruction government adopted a new state constitution that was in compliance with the 15th Amendment. This state constitution declared that black men were entitled to vote and it also guaranteed black children access to education. Of course, this upset the Confederacy and they did not agree with the black men having rights nor the black children receiving education. Now, to give you all a little history lesson, the Civil War was fought between the Union or the Northern States. And the Northern States, they believed in a, in a unitary country, free of slavery and based on equal rights. And the Confederacy is who they fought with. The Confederacy is the Southern States that did not want to abolish slavery. But back to the story. Not only did the Confederacy not agree with black voting and education rights, they also resented the federal officials and white northerners present in Louisiana to enforce black civil rights. There was great racial tension at this time. Opelousas, Louisiana was the seat, and I'm sorry y'all, I probably gonna miss that name up here and there. Y'all know my accent and it is a tongue twister to me. I'm sorry. But Opelousas, Louisiana, was the seat of St. Landry County and also one of the major places that thrived to keep black people oppressed after emancipation. In fact, of the 14,000 citizens within the parish, an estimated 3,000 white male residents were members of the Seymour Knights. Now, the Seymour Knights, they're a branch of the white supremacist group known as the Knights of the White Camellia, which is a group similar to the KKK. Now, for those of you all that would like more information about the Knights of the White Camellia, please check out my video about the Colfax Massacre, and it'll give you all a little bit more information. But um, they actually played um, a major part in that massacre as well. But anyway, back to the story. In April of 1868, many voters within St. Landry Parish rejected the Constitution and supported the white supremacists. This was because mainly many of the candidates, they were Confederate Democratic candidates. However, when the Democrats visited the polls during the elections, they were able to see that they shared the ballot box with a large politically powerful black electorate and the votes were very close. Seeing this made the Democrats nervous. So they began to try and sway black voters to the white controlled Democratic Party but they failed at this time. Now, this is just me thinking out loud, but it looks like they eventually did succeed because today, you know, most black voters, they are Democrats. And it appears that the Democratic Party has been responsible for bills and laws that affect black people in the worst ways. That's just my opinion. You know, so don't come for me. I'm just saying, I'm not saying I'm either party, but, you know, you can agree. Um, if you disagree, you can tell me what you think in the comments below. Like I said on this channel, we can respectfully agree to disagree. So go ahead and drop your comment or whatever, and we can get a discussion popping. But anyway, back to the story. When the Democrats saw that their efforts weren't working to sway the black Republicans to the Democratic Party, they became angry and resulted to intimidation tactics and violence. One of their intimidation tactics was a city ordinance which stated no Negro or freed man shall be allowed to come within the city limits of the town of Opelousas without special permission from his employer. He must also specify the object, the object of his visit at the time necessary for the accomplishment of the same. So basically to break that down. The black people are freed men or former slaves. They were only allowed into town for work purposes. And they better announce that is what they were there for. And they better not tear it too long, if you know what I mean. But with this ordinance, the black people were intimidated and the racial tension began to worsen. 
And the black people, they were being threatened and violently harmed as well. And, of course, the white residents were becoming more violent and the resentment of the black voting rights grew as the later elections of 1868 approached. Now, all white people within the town were not Democrats and they were not all against the black people. There were the white Republicans who stood with the black people or the free men. Now, Republicans like Emerson Bentley, and he was a white journalist who published the radical St. Landry Progress newspaper. He organized and encouraged black people to become politically active. And just to tell you all a little bit more about Mr. Emerson Bentley, he also established a local school for black children and he taught at that school. Mr. Bentley moved from Louisiana, well, I'm sorry, he moved to Louisiana from Ohio to teach with, local, with the local Freedman's Bureau. He was a wonderful man from according to what the reports say. And he was definitely a very rare white ally of the black voters in St. Landry Parish. Now, Mr. Bentley, he became hated amongst the Democrats, of course, and he began to be threatened repeatedly. They referred to him as a carpetbagger. Now, a carpetbagger or that term, it's a derogatory term used for the northerners who came south after the Civil War for profit. I'm sorry, to profit economically or politically. And if you would like to know more about the carpetbaggers and scalawags, check out my video on the Camilla massacre. I provide more information on them as well because they were involved in that situation. But let's keep going. And, you know, I had to put my little shameless plug in there and back to the story. Bentley was being threatened, but this did not stop him from supporting the black people or the freed men. Now, on September the 19th, 1868, Mr. Bentley wrote an article that described the violence of the Seymour Knights. Remember, we said earlier that the Seymour Knights was a group just like the KKK, and they also support, you know, the Democratic Party. But he wrote an article that described the violence the Seymour Knights used against the African-American Democrats in Washington. Now, most Reconstruction era violence was sparked by the conflicts between the black Republicans and the white Democrats. However, all black people were not Republicans at this time either. Some of the Opelousas blacks attempted to join a Democratic political party in that neighboring town of Washington. But when they tried to join that party, the white Democrats of Opelousas were mainly members of the Seymour Knights. So they drove them out of the party with violence. Bentley, he argued that well, in his article, he argued that the violence should have persuaded the black people to remain loyal to the GOP, the grand old party, Republican Party, that is. He said, you know, it should have encouraged them to stay where they were. Um, but let's keep going. And of course, the article that Bentley wrote and him stating that opinion, it enraged the white people. And shortly after the article was released on September the 28th, 1868, Bentley was confronted by three Seymour Knights about his article at the school where he was teaching the children. The Knights told Bentley that his article or report was false and malicious. So Bentley simply just asked them when they said it was false and malicious. So he asked them if they were saying that he told a lie or that he lied within his report. The Knights, they answered Bentley, Bentley's question and they told him, yes, they felt that he lied. And once they told him that, they began to beat him. And, you know, they even used the cane to hit him on his back and his shoulders during that beating, according to the reports. And Bentley was beaten nearly half to death. But before the Seymour Knights had left, they did force Bentley to sign a retraction to the article. Now, while this beating was going on, of course, the children that Bentley was teaching were sitting there watching the, the entire attack. And the children, they were frightened. And so they began to run from the school yelling, they're killing Mr. Bentley. They're killing Mr. Bentley. When word spread about the attack, the Republicans feared for their lives and they assembled in Opelousas Parish. Now, remember, I said a moment ago that Mr. Bentley was beaten half to death. Well, he did not die at this particular time. However, the people of the town, they thought that he had died because the children who witnessed the attack ran through the town yelling they're killing Mr. Bentley. 
Now, Mr. Bentley, he survived his attack and he was hidden overnight in a barn behind the progressive office after he signed an affidavit with the legal authorities about the attack. Bentley ran for nearly three weeks, going from Republican safe house to Republican safe house before escaping back to the north. Now, since the black people thought Mr. Bentley was killed, they feel that they were next and they were, you know, fear for their lives at that time. So the black men in the community, they armed themselves for protection. Now, when the rumor spread of the black men being armed, the white citizens, they really got scared and nervous as well. And they started to think that the black locals were plotting an uprising. And shortly after, you know, they got wind of that news, 27 of the armed black men were soon arrested by the white mobs, mobs which consisted of the Seymour Knights and the Ku Klux Klan or the KKK. Now, the next night after they had arrested those 27 men, the white mobs marched the 27 men from the jail and shot them dead in the street with the sheriff's full cooperation. So the sheriff fully cooperated in this murder of these men. And um, the mobs, they also destroyed the progressive office press. They ransacked the Methodist schools where Bentley helped teach the black children and they unarmed all of the black people throughout the town. Now, the black people unarmed and all the commotion going on, they were also put to work briskly. So pretty much they were working like slaves all over again. And during the midst of all of this, the white mobs also went on a killing rampage that lasted for several weeks. Each day, a new victim fell. The black people were indiscriminately killed, chased hunted down like animals, lynched, and way much more. Now, the blacks, they began to become so scared from the terror that they were seeing and that they were receiving, they began to tie red strings around, I'm sorry, yeah, red strings around their arms to signify to the white patrols that they had surrendered and they sought out for white protection. Now, after the killing subsided, um, several weeks later, Reports say that public Republicans estimated that between 200 to 300 blacks were killed. The Democrats stated that 25 to 30 blacks were killed. And the Army investigation cited 233 blacks were killed. So I'm going to go with the Army investigation's number. And they also discovered dozens of black bodies throughout the town in shallow graves. They were scattered and stacked together in shallow graves throughout the town. Now, some reports say that six white people died, three Republicans and three Democrats. Others say at least 30 white people died. And it's saying that those 30 white people that died did include some who were targeted by the actual mobs of white men for being sympathetic to the black rights. But just to be honest, we probably will never know the actual number of people killed within this massacre. And press accounts of the violence was skewed at this time because the white mobs, they had destroyed the progressive printing press. Remember, we said that earlier. And now the white supremacist newspapers, they pretty much dominated the post-massacre reporting. And they began to flood the press with inaccurate tales of a race riot. It took eight years before another progressive newspaper launched in the parish. Now, the brutal attack in Opelousa terrorized black voters into mere silence. I mean, they were quiet as could be. And when former Union General Ulysses S. Grant won the 1868 presidential election, he won without a single vote from St. Landry Parish. He didn't get one single vote from this parish. Now, the black people and white Republicans, they were too afraid for him. They were too afraid to vote for him. I'm sorry. And we already know not one Democrat was going to vote for the former union general, of course. And they were so strongly against the union, they massacred hundreds of people. So, of course, he was not going to receive a vote after all of that went on. 
And it was so bad that the voter registration supervisor, he said that he was convinced if any man voted other than Democrat the day of the election, he would be killed within 24 hours. And now, remember, when I said earlier that the press, the white supremacist press, dominated the newspapers and all of that. So the massacre was said to be not a massacre at all at this current time. It was said to be a race riot that turned into a race war. The black people were said to have caused the event as well. Now, there was another article that was published, and this article that was published It was supposedly written about the event, and this article stated that the white people deeply regret the necessity which compelled the citizens to cripple and kill so many Negroes. But the Negroes had laughed at their warnings for more than a year, and the fight was inevitable because it was the last and only effective argument that could be used with the Negro. A carpetbag editor, now they're talking about Bentley right here, and his miserable incendiary she caused the riot and they're talking about the article that he wrote so pretty much to break that down they're pretty much saying that the tensions were high between the white and black citizens within the town and the whites they felt like they had done all they could to intimidate the republicans on over to the democratic party but the blacks refused so they felt their only other option to get them over to their party was to use lethal force And this was pretty much um, the match that lit the fire and sparked the massacre. Now, the blacks, they were unarmed and outnumbered. But even if they weren't, they really never even stood a chance because the whites, they had more and better weapons than they had. And, of course, nothing was ever done about the massacre because when it originally occurred, it was called a race war or a race riot that turned into a race war. So nothing was ever really done about it. No one brought to justice or anything. Um, and the authorities, they pretty much looked at the massacre as mutual combat between two different races. And the Republican Party, after this particular massacre occurred, the Republican Party within St. Landry Parish was eliminated for several years. So pretty much in the end, the white supremacists got what they wanted all along. And with that being said, that is the end of my chat, or today's chat for us, rather. And I want you all to tell me what you all think. Please comment below. Feel free to respectfully agree to disagree if you prefer. And please like the video so I know you all want me to continue to make these type of videos. Subscribe if you haven't already. And we're on our journey to a thousand subscribers. So you all go ahead and hit that button. Please support if you can. No pressure. And the information to support will be in the description below. And until next time, peace, love, and blessings.